By inefficient memory usage, garbage collection may kick in more often. This may slow our application down. In this screencast, we'll use that memory to analyze memory traffic and detect inefficient memory usage. Let's have a look. When launching the profiler, we have to make sure we are collecting memory traffic information. Next, we can launch our application with the profiler attached. Here's our game of live application again, which has a number of cells that survive or perish during each generation, based on the number of neighbors they have. I'll keep it running for a while, so we have some data to look at. Let's switch to that memory and capture a first snapshot here. There are two approaches to look at memory traffic. The first approach is to capture one snapshot and look at memory traffic between attaching the profiler and the time of our snapshot. Clicking memory traffic in the snapshot will show us exactly that information. If we want to look at memory traffic from a given point of interest, we could look at memory traffic between two snapshots. Let's capture another snapshot first. Once completed, we can add both snapshots to the comparison and view memory traffic between these two snapshots. Both approaches yield similar data. We can see which objects have been created and deallocated in the selected time frame, including the number of objects and the number of bytes in memory. We can group memory traffic in two ways. We can group it by type list to find out which objects were created and collected most intensively. After clicking a type, we can see the stack trace it is created in. For some types, this may only be one, for others there may be multiple stack traces creating a type. We can also group by pack traces. This lets us see which functions generate most memory traffic. Clicking a function will show us all objects created by it. If we click the calculate next generation function here, we can see it generates quite some cell objects. Returning to the type list shows us that about 50% of memory traffic here is caused by these cell objects. What's more, the number of allocated objects is very similar to the number of collected objects. That's strange, as we would expect cell objects to remain in memory for the entire simulation. All these collections are definitely hurting our application performance. We can see from the stack trace the calculate next generation function is responsible for creating these cell objects. Let's switch to Visual Studio and have a look at our code. We can see that for every generation of cells in our game of life, new cell objects are created. This explains part of the story, the allocation site. But where are the allocations happening? Back in that memory, we can see the update method calls our calculate next generation method. The number of allocations and deallocations is pretty much the same. So let's look in there. It seems that for every cell in the array of cells, we are replacing the existing one. This existing one is then no longer referenced and gets collected. This definitely explains the other side of the memory traffic we are seeing. To fix this issue, we would have to change the code to reuse existing cells and change their properties, instead of constantly allocating and replacing them. A good practice is to profile the application again after optimizing code. I've done that here and captured two snapshots at different times during execution. If we now look at memory traffic between the two snapshots, we can clearly see our cell type is no longer causing as much memory traffic as it did before. A good optimization for sure. For more tutorials, check out our website. Thank you for watching. See ya.